guys what's going on i hope you guys are staying safe i hope everything's good wherever you are um guys before i get into some boxing news and what i wanted to talk about there's some very sad news um a lot of you in america probably won't know uh about cricket but obviously uh, a legendary cricketer in shane Warne has unfortunately passed away before I get into what I was wanted to say and what the news that I wanted to talk about, what I wanted to talk about is that it's very, very sad, sad news that, you know, a legend like Shane Warne, you know, who was somebody that transcended cricket, uh, was like a childhood hero or like in the sense that you like I saw him as like a superhero in the sense that you get certain certain sportsmen from different sports that are like bigger than the sport. They're so big. And unfortunately, he passed away at the age of 52 with a suspected uh, heart attack. And like I said, it's kind of like a shock to me because, you know, it's somebody that I grew up watching, like part of my childhood, grew up watching as a massive cricket fan. Um, and then to hear this news today was just absolutely shocking. Um, yeah, uh, what a player, what, what one of the greatest cricketers of all time. Um, just, an, just a genius, really, genius um cricketer and to hear such devastating news uh, you know to lose his life at such a young age must be devastating one of like i said one of the greatest cricketers of all time um just a great great sportsman a great and he was he was not just a great cricketer yeah he, he was very lively a uh, great character um you know some people are just very good at what they do they're not they're not great characters he wasn't just a great cricketer and a genius he was also very lively um, and a great character on the field as well. So, you know, he, he definitely helped grow the sport. You know, I remember watching him and, uh, you know, when he was actually bowling, you know, he was a spin bowler. He, you know, I, I used to actually used to sit down and watch him because you always felt that he could do something magical. You know, he, he, he had the capability of doing something just special, uh, a bit like Messi, a bit like Ali, um, you know, just like he had, he had the ability to do something special at any moment. So we'd sit and watch him, um, and every every ball that he used to bowl was like an event. Um, so so sad, so so sad. Like I said, he, you know, watching him and growing up watching him, um, he was like like a superhero. You almost kind of like feel these, although they're humans and they just got a talent you sometimes start viewing these people as superheroes and almost so they can't die they they obviously can um so yeah it's 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 sad it's really really sad i remember when muhammad ali passed away that was that was sad and i never really i never saw muhammad ali like live like he was before my time you know so i never ever i never ever got to see him but just like watching his videos and on youtube and and you know you have an affection to him and being such a big boxing fan you know, I I got, you know, I had such a big affection to Muhammad Ali um, and he became like a hero um, to not just people that watch boxing, but all over the world. He, he was he was no doubt the greatest sportsman, in my opinion. But Shane Warne was definitely one of the greatest cricketers of all time. And it's so sad, you know, so, so, so sad, so, so sad. Uh, but moving on to talk about what I want to talk about. I wanted to talk about what Oscar De La Hoya said uh, about Ryan and Canelo potentially fighting in the future. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, don't really take a lot of things that Oscar De La Hoya says seriously. Like Oscar De La Hoya is a legend. Like honestly, what he did in boxing, I feel like he's so disrespected and he achieved so much as a boxer, you know, Olympic gold medalist, you know, five division world champion. The guy was an icon, really. Like he was a, he was a great, great boxer. But I feel like some of the stuff that he comes out with, some of the stuff that he does at times on social media, you know, some people just kind of disrespect him because they they find him they find him an uh, individual who, you know, they just find him a bit cringe, you know. But uh, like I said, I have so much respect for Delahoya and what he what he's done in the game, and he he was no doubt a great great fighter. There's no doubt. For me, De La Hoya was some, someone special when it came to fighting in the ring. But what I will say, in terms of Ryan Garcia fighting Canelo, I don't see that ever being po possible. 
Uh, he said that, you know, they could potentially fight at a catch rate of 165. Um, uh, right in three, four years' time, look, Ryan Garcia is 135-pounder. I don't ever think Ryan Garcia is going to fill out to the point where he's going to make 165. To be brutally honest with you, I don't think he's ever going to get to that stage. So uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind of something that Oscar's just put out there. Uh, look, there's been some beef between Ryan and Canelo. Canelo kind of dismissed, like he was asked about it uh, when he was talk when you know at the press conference with the Bivol, and Canelo kind of dismissed it. I think he's had enough of talking about Ryan Garcia. I think he was genuinely trying to give Ryan Garcia advice as like an older brother kind of thing. And he kind of just thinks that after seeing the response from Ryan, he probably thinks that, look, I can't be asked anymore. You know, this because Ryan Garcia came back and said, I'm tired of Canelo giving me sticks. So he probably, he was probably trying to genuinely give him advice. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, Ryan probably took it the wrong way where he felt like Canelo's digging him out. So Ryan, uh, Canelo probably thought, okay, forget about it. I don't really want to get involved in this mess. Um, so yeah, it's like, for me, Personally, I think, I, I, like I said, I don't think there's a fight can ever happen between them. And if it does happen, Canelo would would seriously batter him, irrespective of how much Ryan Garcia develops. Ryan Garcia is not a big guy at all. Uh, he's got a skinny built. At max, I can see him moving to welterweight. Uh, at a strong push, which I don't think he'll get to, is 154. But he's never going to get to middleweight or super mid or even close to super middleweight. So... Uh, that's not going to happen. So, and especially not in three, four years' time. You know, there's no way Ryan Garcia is going to fill out in three, four years' time where he's going to be fighting or he he's going to be able to fight at 165 against Saul Canelo Alvarez. That that isn't happening. Uh, it doesn't matter how you look at it. That just ain't happening. So, you know, Oscar's putting something out there which I, I don't think any of us thinks going to come off. Uh, but I I think. I, hopefully Ryan Garcia is able to fulfill his potential because I do think there's some potential there. I do think Ryan Garcia is a very good, very good prospect and a good talent. You know, he's had a very extensive amateur career, so this isn't a guy that, you know, is a nobody. This is a guy that, you know, he can box. He's a good fighter. Let's see if he can get to the levels that, you know, he we, you know, he, he potentially can potentially can get to. Uh, there's a lot of people that have got question marks over Ryan Garcia. They don't know how far he's going to go. They don't know how far he's going to get to. I'm one of them as well. I I don't want to write him off. And I don't want to say he's going to make it to where you know where he's supposed to get to. Um, I think it's going to be time will tell kind of thing. Uh, he is a good fighter. He has got uh, some skills. He has got some ability there. There's no doubt about it. Um, but we just have to wait and see how he develops and how where he gets to. Uh, I think he's being managed well by Oscar De La Hoya. And listen, when when you're Oscar De La Hoya and you see a potential future star, you're not going to be putting him in dangerous fights right right off the bat because you know a loss could really hurt his credibility, hurt where you know he wants to take Ryan Garcia. And he and Oscar De La no, Oscar De La Hoya knows that you know Ryan Garcia is still quite green. He's not the finished article, uh, so he needs him to develop. Now Oscar De La Hoya was also talking about the fact that you know Ryan Garcia left Eddie Reynoso. He said. You're talking to somebody that had six different trainers and he goes that change of trainer is sometimes very good. You know, if a trainer has five or you know, you have five or six fights and that trainer freshening up things is always a good thing. Uh, some people will say the other uh, opposite. They'll say, no, one trainer is good. He knows your, your, you like the back of your hand. Um, he knows when to push you, when not to push you, when to give you rest. Well, a new trainer won't know. Um... So, it, everyone's different, you know. Amir Khan had a lot of trainers. It worked and didn't work at times. Um, I don't think having too many trainers is, is a good thing. Um, but everyone sees it different. Every fighter works for every fighter differently. Look, certain fighters like Oscar De La Hoya, he's, like, he's a Hall of Famer, you know, and he had six different trainers. Uh, he had losses. I think Oscar De La Hoya lost six times. So... At the end, at the end of the day, some some fighters just feel they just like a change of scenery. They like to freshen things up. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I I don't think Ryan Garcia really wanted to leave Eddie Reynoso. I think it was just a thing that where Ryan probably felt that he wasn't going to get the attention he needed uh, under Reynoso because Reynoso's so busy. Um, so he probably thought it would be better 
for to be trained by Joe Goosen, who probably doesn't have as many fighters and, and will be able to give Ryan Garcia, treat him like the star, treat him like a star where he'll be able to give him, you know, uh, star-like treatment in the sense that he'll be able to work his schedule around Ryan. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what Ryan needed. Uh, he needs someone to guide him, to give him time because Ryan Garcia needs to be guided. Uh, he needs a lot of time. He needs to improve. He needs not the finished article. He's quite green. He needs to be. He needs to be given a lot of time so he can improve and get to where he wants to get to. So yeah, I don't think a change of trainer is um, bad. It just depends on whether Joe Goosen's the right fit. Uh, I actually think someone like Virgil Hunter, maybe even a Teddy Atlas type trainer, might have been good. I don't know. Joe Goosen's a very attacking style trainer. So listen, it may work. It may not work. We'll just have to wait time. I think. I think Ryan Garcia is already. I think he's already been trained by Joe Goosen before. So maybe it was just the fact that. Because he had, because he knows Joe Goosen and he's trained with him before, and he probably had a good relationship with him before. He probably thinks it's just an easy fit, rather than going to someone completely new. Um, so yeah, look, all the best to Ryan Garcia. Um, I, I think I think Ryan Garcia has potential. He has ability. But let's see how far he can go in terms of him going up and fighting Canelo in four, five, three, four years. That's not going to happen. Uh, Ryan Garcia, I don't think his body is built where he's going to be going anywhere near middleweight. To be honest with you, I, I don't. I don't. I think, you know, at max, I can see him going at welterweight. Um, you know, he's not a very big guy. He's like what was he five nine five ten, um, and he doesn't. His body just doesn't seem the type of body. How old is he? Twenty two, twenty three. I don't see him having the body where he's going to be able to, you know beef up in years time where in in seven eight nine years time where he's going to be going up to middleweight i just don't think his body's built like that like said everyone's different like tia fimo i wouldn't be surprised his body's built a bit differently ryan's a little bit more slim built um so yeah like even errol spence for example i can't see him moving up to middleweight i don't think his body is um a middleweight body like look at kel brook for example look how big he was he didn't go up to middleweight, and he was massive compared to Ryan Garcia. Even when he was Ryan Garcia's age, he was massive, and he didn't go up. So, like I said, uh, you know, I don't think Ryan Garcia's body is built for um, middleweight or super middleweight. So he's never going to be fighting Canelo. That's just something that Oscar's put out there. But it makes a good, it makes a, it makes a good story, you know. And that's why Canelo didn't even respond to it when he was asked. He said, "You and Ryan Garcia fighting," and he goes, "That's just." rubbish in it like Canelo didn't even respond to it because he knows it's nonsense that's never going to happen um you know Canelo Alvarez he started at, I think he started at 140 147 I think but Canelo Alvarez had a different type of physique Canelo has a really stocky big type physique even though he's probably maybe Ryan Garcia's height maybe a little short but Canelo has a different type of physique you know he has a really he's really built like a house whereas Ryan Garcia has a really slim you know, physique, which I don't think he's going to move up. Like, I think Ryan at max is going to move up to welterweight. I, I don't think he's going to go any further than that, to be honest with you. That's just my opinion. I don't think he's going to go any higher than that in weight. Uh, but 165, no chance. There's no way he's moving up 30 pounds in four or five years' time. Because by, Canelo's 31. So in four or five years' time, he's going to be 36, 37. All right? So, yeah, there's no way this guy's moving up to uh 165 in four or five years time you know i i don't see it but you know uh let's see how they how ryan garcia's career pans out leave your thoughts let me know what you think in the comment section below about what oscar de la hoya said in the in the comment section and i'll see you guys in the next video peace